Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. Now, yeah. when we get a paper cut, we realize how many times a day we bump that. Yeah. When you're recovering at home and you've got a toddler climbing up to nurse. Who doesn't care. And, yes. Who doesn't? Not that she doesn't care. She just doesn't get it. Right. You know, she's like, oh, mama has a boo-boo, and that's it. But, yeah, so, I mean, just working around, having young kids and having to work around an injury. And then I'm right-hand dominated, too. So then you can't use your hand the way you want to. And I was in a cast for a short amount of time and. You know, I tell people two things about my injury here um, is I said, can I curse on here? Absolutely. Okay. Um, <laughs> Cause I was holding back. I've been holding back. Me too. I, but I tell people just to, just to be honest, shit gets real when you have to put pressure on your own wound and you can't wipe your butt. Okay. I just want to throw that out there. That's something every big guy can remember. Listen, listen. People don't realize it's the little things with injuries like this that make all the difference in the world. So when you have on like a, it's really like kind of like a splint or like a half cast. So my arm is at a 90 degree angle. You, there's not much, you know what I mean? There's not much wiping going on. And then to use your left hand, which you're not used to, um, yeah, some days I would just take a shower. After I use the restroom, because you just can't trust you, the clean. You know what's worse? You know what I mean? Do you know what's worse than that? Mm. Ben will remember this. Our guest last week mm. was a peace officer who was shot in the line of duty, mm. shot in the butt, mm. came out right by his special place, and went right back on the other side. The doctor told him in the trauma center, you will get infection because there's no way you we can pack both sides of that, but there's no way you can keep that clean. And he was back in the hospital three separate occasions. Wow. So booty shot across, expo no, that was bad. Now, Yeah, well, I guess I won't complain then. No, no, you have every right to complain. Yeah. I wish somebody had come and installed a bidet in my house, though. That would Oh, been he's got helpful. one in his house, uh, yeah. right down there, our cameraman. He's, got <laughs> he's like, but you can't use mine. <laughs> oh, yeah. <forget. laughs> so, but... Um, but yeah, you know, so things like that were very helpful, helpful people offering to, you know, come help me with my kids. My neighbors are fantastic. Um, they're like grandparents to my kids. I got out of the hospital on Halloween, actually. So I looked like I was dressed for Halloween because, you know, when you go in an ambulance, they cut everything off of you, take all your stuff. So I didn't have any clothes to go home in. So I had to go home in paper scrubs. You mean nobody brought you clothes? <laughs> so we, you know what? We were Leah so, would have picked you outfits. I'm sure he would have. Um, um. We were so wrapped up in everything. I didn't even think about that. You know what I mean? But um, there were a lot of visitors when I got home. I mean, a lot of visitors, which was very helpful. I mean, I had a girlfriend who had just had a baby, and she would come over and basically babysit me because my son was in preschool, but I had Ella at home still, and I have one arm, and my husband had to go back to work and after a while. But, yeah, she had just had a baby, and she would come over with her infant <laughs> And basically do laundry for me, help me unload and load my dishes, help me put Ella down for naps. And, you know, my mom was there. My mother-in-law lives here, too. So it was nice having people just come over and do little things for you. Um, obviously, and then Gwinnett County was awesome. I mean, I got... I got flowers, I got cards, I got I had like my friends came to visit me. You know, they took time from their own jobs, their own families, even friends from high school came to visit. So it just when things like this happen, it's not that I didn't know how much people cared about me. You really find out who's there Absolutely. for you and who isn't. And you know, sometimes I would have so much help I didn't need, I would have to turn people away. So that's that's never a problem I will complain about. Right, right. Um but it's just Things that just come up over time that, you know, you just kind of don't you don't think about. Like the story I was telling you earlier is I didn't know how to talk to my four-year-old. You know, he, my son was four at the time about my injury. You know, so things like that are you don't know how much to tell them and what not to tell them. But kids are very smart. Don't ever doubt their intelligence because they understand a lot more. Me and my husband decided we were going to omit some things we just said hey mommy got in a fight with a bad guy and broke her arm which wasn't a lie because right. i did break i did break my radius bone and um then once he saw the through and through up here when he was going to help me change my bandages he's like 
You have two holes in your arm. Uh-oh. You sure the bad guy didn't just shoot you? And I just, I froze because I didn't know what like, to say. And I fell on a stick. It was crazy. I fell on a stick. And my husband's like, a stick? Did he buy it? And for that time, he okay. did. And okay. I said, I, I didn't know what to say. But we, a week later, I talked to my therapist. I talked to my mom. You know, I talked to my brother. I talked to my husband. Had these, you know, this big conversation. And they were like, you know, he, he's smart enough. He's mature enough. In a, in a he's a 30-year-old and a 4-year-old body. As we say in the South, he's been here before. Oh, yes, he has. So he has an old soul. We told him, and he looks at me, and he kind of processes it, and he says, duh, <laughs> I told you you got shot in the arm. And I was like, oh, okay. And he says, well, why did you lie to me? And I was like, first of all, lie is a strong word. Exactly. That is strong. I omit it. And he's right. like, what does omit mean? So now I'm explaining to him. So basically, I'm like, listen, listen, listen. We love you. We just wanted to protect you. We didn't want to scare you, but, you know. So he's like, okay, and then hops off the bed and goes away. Absolutely. But when kids are that age, their cognitive level develops so quickly. So, like, every three to four months, he's smarter. He's more observant. He can connect the dots better. So then he asks more detailed questions. So it's like, okay, I don't lie to him. I answer it, and I just answer it. And that's it. I don't get get into too much detail. Um, We have run into some issues with, you know, him having some anxiety issues about me returning to work on light duty over the summer and him worrying about somebody hurting me. And he had this whole elaborate thing about what if the ceiling at the station I'm working out of was made of glass and the bad guy got a, a tall ladder and climbed on the ladder and broke the glass and came in the but building. He, but he's always thought of this. I Do you know. remember the one with the, your daughter in the car and he wanted you to get her in there quick and lock that door and get her on the driver's side? <laughs> yes. This, folks, I, I, I wish Liam were here. Uh, this young man. He's very priceless. protective. He's in his car seat. Mom is strapping in the baby and he says, Mom, Mom, get her in quick and lock the door and get around to your side and get in. I don't want anybody to grab her. And you looked at him like, what did this guy? Come- he was very fearful for some reason that someone would take his baby sister. And maybe then, she's very small, before she was vocal. But now with all the attitude that she has, they would get to the corner and bring her back. But I like, I like <laughs> I what his... I like that's what, what happened. <laughs> you, you made the mistake of asking him what his plan would be if someone tried to grab his sister. Do you remember that? Oh, Lord. He said, Mom. And he, she was only three weeks. If anybody tries to take my sister... I will kick them in the ding ding, and I said, "Okay, well, what if they don't have a ding ding? Well, I'll, I'll I'll kick them in the gina. I will hit them with a sword and put blood on them. I will smash them with a car, and I'll hit them with a football." And he didn't add one last thing. He he, it changes over time. Okay, because that one you shared, he said he's gonna pee on them. Well, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. So he would always add something new. So I asked my husband. My husband, I call him a caveman. <laughs> And because he, Jason deals with right now, he likes to protect, he likes to provide, okay? So I said, did you say something to him like, about this? Like, did you have like a Viking conversation with him or a Jabari from Black Panther, Mountain Tribe conversation? He's like, no, he came up with that all on his own. And if like people would try to come up to look at, you know, my daughter when she was an infant, he would tell people, you go away from my sister. I love it. You do not look at her. And so... I mean, it made me smile, kind of, because he was being protective over her already. But, whew, she's two and a half going on 26, and she will protect herself. Trust me. You said something in the course of normal conversation that should be said just in the normal conversation without any. You said counselor, therapist. Yes. I Do not be afraid. whether you, Whatever you do for a living, even if you're a Tier 1 operator, a Tier 7, a Tier 9 operator, therapy works. Don't ever not do it. You're precious. You deserve it. Mm-hmm. And see therapy. We're going to talk about 500, the 100 Club, mm-hmm. but I want to jump forward in our remaining minutes to Christmas time. Oh, yes. So. And camping. Lord. So the 100 Club, when they said, hey, we want to do some things for you guys for Christmas, and, you know, they called and say, hey, what is... What are your kids into? What is your husband into? What are you into? So we named some things. And, you know, they're like, well, what do you like? And I was like, I just like to see people happy at Christmas. Like, I don't, I'm an adult. You don't have to get me anything. My gift is people together and seeing their smiles. So 
they said, well, you know, we still would like to get you something. So I said, okay, I like concerts and stuff like that. So I'm like, all right. And they're like, you know, what about like anything as a family? And I, I couldn't really think of anything, but I did mention to them um, a couple weeks before my critical incident, we had gone camping. So it was the first time I was taking our kids camping. Um, we only did overnight. I'm new to camping because I did not grow up camping. Even you though, were in Air Force, ROTC. They don't camp. They stay in some nice accommodations, the Air, Air Force. It. Well, even growing up in Georgia, I didn't camp. I, I tell people, um, the black people I know don't camp, and if we sleep outside, it's because we're homeless. It's not because we spend money to pretend not to have a home. That's just, I just put that out there. So, I'm going to use that, and I'm not going to give you credit for it. I'm my, stealing that. My husband is a camper. Um, and the kids just had a good time. So because they had such a good time, I had a good time. So for Christmas, the 100 Club shows up with a news crew, and Santa Claus rolls up in a Jeep. And this is all on YouTube, folks. <laughs> yes. You can actually look, find this, and watch. And I think there were like three elves that showed up. Nope. Let me interrupt. What did Liam say he needed to do before they got there? Oh, he had to put on his handsome clothes. Exactly. So he he had he donned a, a pair of black corduroy pants, I believe, his corduroy vest, and a dress shirt. Okay, so he had his handsome clothes on, and he sees Santa Claus pull up, and he's like Santa, and he is so excited. I was excited too, and because my kids are so excited, and it's Santa Claus. Like who doesn't get excited about that? They came in with so much stuff, like they probably made about three trips to the car. And I'm just watching them bring all this stuff in. So, you know, we do our news story and we hang out with Santa and the elves and the kids are just having such a great time. And it was very memorable. We took pictures and it was awesome. So later on that night, Mama starts peeling open some of these gifts uh -huh. just to see what's what. There were some duplicate things, but they were really awesome. I said, hey, my kid already has this or they're too old for it. How can I get this back to you? They're like, you know what? Just pay it forward and, and, and give it to someone else in need. I said, no problem. I removed stuff from under the tree and put it away in my closet. I had enough stuff in the closet to re-gift <laughs> gifts for my daughter's birthday in January, my son's birthday in March. And I, I'm no lie. I still have stuff in the closet that I'm going to give to my son this Christmas. So don't watch this before Christmas. <laughs> so, but I mean, th I mean, I just, it blew my mind the amount of stuff that they gave us, not to mention they gave us a brand new tent for camping they gave us a camping table, like a little kitchen setup. And one company took wanted that. Didn't one company want it, to do that? It was um, VIP Mortgage. VIP Mortgage, so, shout out. Thank you very much. So what I did was, um, when we went camping, we took pictures. I sent the pictures over to Carolyn with uh, the 100 Club. And um, she forwarded on to the president of VIP Mortgage. And he wrote back that that made his day. He was so happy to see that what he was able to provide for us made you know it, it made our it made his day to see well, us using it and I told him I wanted him to see that he was now a part of our family's memories you know because that's what I'm about now is you know experiences because that October camping trip you know if things had gone differently I that might have been like the last camping trip or big memory my kids had you know that could that involved me right you know i might not, not be here talking real. to you so i wanted to show them like hey we use this stuff you did not waste your money we we went camping twice this summer you know i'd love to go camping a couple more times for the end of the year because it is really about experiences and when things like this happen it reminds you of how quickly Things can be gone. That's why I wear this bracelet, which my my friend Ryan that I worked with back at Gwinnett, when she came out to visit, it's a bracelet that has Officer Tony's name on it, his end of watch date, and it says, um, we've got each other's back at all times. And it has uh, his badge, and it has the Gwinnett County patch on it. Because it reminds me, when I have days, and I do have them still, that I don't feel like it, that I'm just tired, I want to lay down, or my anxiety kicks up, or I get a little depressed, I get to look down at this, and this is a reminder. I never met Officer Tony, but he's saying to me, get up. You got a second chance. You can do this. I cannot. 
So that's what that reminds me wow. of every time that I look at I'm, it. I'm, you know, so that's why I tell people, I said, my, my incident is just those three seconds. I said, I had a whole week's worth of emotional stuff going on. And then there's that window of craziness and then the things that come after it. Um, that is, to me, the, the bigger story. Here in the ins and the outs of the incident, people are always, oh, wow. Oh, oh that's crazy. That's wild. That's dangerous. I can't imagine. But for me, the story is a lot bigger than that. Exactly. That's why we touched on it so little because it is minuscule compared to the big picture. Mm -hmm. You have, you and your partner have gotten a lot of recognition since that, since then. We've gotten several awards you, since then. You, if, if your awards <laughs> were college degrees, you'd have more degrees than a thermometer. <laughs> now, I've been wanting to use that, and I had to, I had to switch it up to get that in there. Fit it in there. <laughs> but you have been everywhere, uh, and and I, I see more of that in your future. You you don't like it when I say it, but I know that sometime in my life I'm going to vote for you. <laughs> I don't know in what capacity that's going to be, but I, but I honestly believe that and have felt that way for years. Uh, these invitations, not only to the world's greatest podcast, but you're going to have invitations more so each and every day in passing days because you've got a, not only do you have a story to tell, there's some lessons there, mm -hmm. and it's and and. I see you, and I don't, it's a combination, motivational speaker, technical speaker, <laughs> uh, modern day preacher. I just, I just see so much of that. So you've literally, you've been wards, real estate, I mean, every association in the Valley. Yeah, my, my brother is the, um, he is the president elect for the Scottsdale area Realtors Association. And I was just asked by his brokerage to come in and, um, it was last uh, September, actually. It's Realtor Safety Month, and I was asked to be a part of their live stream or podcast uh, for their training about safety, doing open houses and, and showing houses, and just being self-aware, basically. And, you're, um, and uh, I believe that you're able to do that for other agencies in the Valley if they ask, other realtor groups. Yes, that, that's something that, that came up also. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but, you know, because it's important because people don't think about it. And, like, we have a different mindset because of – our training and what's been ingrained in us throughout our and careers. And the realtor does the complete opposite. They open the house, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> turn off the alarms, right. don't know the alarm, right. and just wave at you. Puts And to put signs to tell you where they are alone. Yeah. So I get so, that. So it is different. And you, you know what? I, I tell people, too, about this experience. This could have been worse. But good. I've had a lot of good things happen to me over this almost. The, the 29th will be a year. Today is the 22nd. So I have a week before I've hit that year since my critical incident. I've had a lot of good things happen during this, this year. That, and I, I can't complain. You know, I've met people I would not have normally have met. I've attended events I would not have normally had the chance to attend. Um, and I love, and I tell people this always sounds corny, because they're like, oh, why did you want to become a police officer? Why did you stay? I said, I honestly like helping people. You make I, a difference. I honestly like helping people. And I have no shame in talking about the fact that the therapist that I see, I had started seeing her like the month before my critical incident happened just because I wanted to maintain. Because mm -hmm. how many times do we go to trainings and you hear about, you know, uh, law enforcement suicides, you hear about what happens to us after we retire, our health, our sleep. I was trying to, I was going to Heart Fit for Duty, which is a medical office geared towards first responders. You know, I was doing that. I was losing weight before my critical incident. I was seeing a therapist just to be mentally ready, right? Then this happens. So I was kind of frustrated about it for a while, and I was talking to my therapist about it, and it just clicked one day. I said, you know what? I can't continue to harp on this. I said, I was doing all those things to prepare me for what was, hap was going to happen because had I not already had that mindset of I need to start practicing what I preach, I can't tell somebody on a call, if you have too much in your basket, you need to unload it, you need to talk to people, and I'm not doing that myself. So I started checking in with people more, letting them know if I was feeling good or if I wasn't. I didn't come to work if I wasn't mentally there. And I started seeing a therapist. And I told her, if I didn't have that support system, if I didn't have that mindset already, I don't think I would be where I am today mentally. Now, I still have struggles. I've had panic attacks. I'm still learning triggers, which is a little annoying. I'm a type A person, so I can't CIT or, you know, crisis intervention team myself. <laughs> I'm on peer support. I can't peer support myself. So you do have to reach out to other people, but it's all about 
your mindset and the people that are around you to support you. And that's okay you. for people to do. Yeah. And talking about it's important because you and I both know people who, who could use it and don't and yeah. get to keep that macho and rah, 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 yeah. And, and all it does is hurts us in the end. Exactly. That's all it does is hurts us in the end. And you know, I'm I try to reach out to people. You know, when I when I look at somebody at work and I say, hey, how are you doing? Like I really really mean it because you'd be surprised at the responses you get when somebody can tell that you need it. I've had a hey how you doing turn into a 30 minute oh, absolutely. just emotional like unload session and they need people we we need that especially in law enforcement you can't keep that stuff bottled up because no. it doesn't it doesn't help anybody and I have a family that I love and I don't want to shut them out because I feel like they don't understand what I'm going through my husband has been phenomenal in all this. He has been patient with me. He has been there for me. He pushes me when he sees, I'm like, ah, I don't want to. He's like, nope, come on, we're going to get up. We're going to do this. If I'm not feeling myself, I let him know, hey, Jason, baby, I'm not feeling it today. I just want to lay down. You know, so you have to have that support because if the people closest to you, your family, you know, your kids, your best friends, if they're not there to kind of hold you up when you can't stand up, you're just going to fall, and, and you're just going to lay there, and it's just going to get worse, you know. So if you're so inclined and you reach out to the 100 Club, please let them know that Lindsay McCall Long introduced you to them. I know we've gone over time, but it's been worth every minute for sorry. me. No, no, don't be sorry. <laughs> but, you know, it wouldn't be complete if uh, if you – we didn't – some of the things that we used to do, you, you haven't done yet. You haven't called me stupid, and you haven't called I'm me – I'm trying to be mature here. Well, no, but, but say it the way – Say it the special way. And you're so stupid. I, you know, there are very few people that could do that. And what she said, oh, you're stupid. Boy, boy, you are stupid. That's a term of endearment in the South. Oh, I know. it. If you've not been in the South, you need to go. And bless, uh, and bless your heart. Bless your heart. And I'm sincere when I say that. And my other one, and I'm sincere when I say that. And I don't mean maybe. There's so many things from the South. That's right. Uh, last question we ask everybody, the real tough ones. Okay. Does pineapple belong on pizza? It does. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Well, we can't be friends anymore. Uh, well, Lindsay, you know, so close to that critical incident. I, I want to thank you for trusting me. I know that that was an issue for you because she went and watched the Yeet video. I don't know if you all seen my Yeet video because I do some silly stuff. He does. And she watched that last night, and I'm sure she's thinking the chief is going to fire me if I go to that pear-shaped old man show. Growing up in Atlanta, Yeet is like yeet. a part of your vocabulary. Exactly. <laughs> Hot Lana. Hot Lana. My kid, Liam, says it now. If he sees a great skateboard jump, he goes, yeet. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I didn't know I said it that much. <laughs> I love my time in Georgia, and I love the time we've spent today. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming in. I We're going to get this out to as many people because you're going to touch some lives because uh, some people are going to hear it's about therapy. They're going to hear about all these other things. They're going to take advantage of it. And whether you become chief of police, president of the United States, uh, publisher of Forbes magazine. I hope you don't forget the big people. The, I mean big, I mean big fat people oh, in your Lord. life. Stop it. Stop. God bless you and thank you. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate this today. Because people don't, I, I don't think they realize how critical this is when something bad happens. It's real time, instant these days with the internet. All right. <laughs> and, and I will tell a CEO to his or her face, sir or madam, if you're going to be a loose cannon, you should not be the spokesperson.